From Hollywood, California, we bring you G. From Hollywood, California, we bring you Gene Hersholt in a new Dr. Christian drama called Glamour, presented for your pleasure by the Cheese Bro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonics, and other famous Vaseline specialties. As our guest of honor this evening, we would like to present young Joe Abercrombie, who is going to tell you of his experiences with one of our products. I have an older brother only a few years older than I, who used to be quite good-looking. I say used to be because in the last few years he has been losing his hair. And it certainly has made an unfortunate change in his appearance. I was determined that I wasn't going to follow my brother's footsteps in that respect. And when I noticed that my scalp was dry and that my hair was getting brittle and hard to manage and was flecked with dandruff scales, I determined to check those danger signals immediately. I tried rubbing Vaseline hair tonic on my scalp every week just before I washed my hair. And believe me, it certainly made a difference. I've used Vaseline hair tonic regularly ever since. Those unsightly flakes of dandruff are gone, and my hair is soft and healthy looking. And easy to keep in place. And I sure am grateful to the makers of Vaseline hair tonic. If you have any of these symptoms of dry scalp, take this young man's advice. Give your scalp a good Vaseline hair tonic massage before each shampoo. Vaseline hair tonic is different. It contains absolutely no drying ingredients. It supplements the natural oils of the scalp that are so easily washed away by frequent shower baths or dried out by too much steam heat. You'll find Vaseline hair tonic economical, too. It comes in two generous sizes of shaker top bottles at 40 and 70 cents. Get a bottle of Vaseline hair tonic at your neighborhood druggist tomorrow. There goes the curtain music, and the play is about to begin. Tonight, Gene Hersholt, our star, will be supported by a talented Hollywood cast, including Rosemary DeCamp, who plays the doctor's secretary, Judy Price, Janet Russell as our 16-year-old heroine, Glamour McCarty, Gloria Holden as Ellen McCarty, her mother, Leo Cleary and Ella Lang as Honest John Clark and his wife, Evie, and Albert Van Antwerp as Judge Latimer. The opening scene of tonight's Dr. Christian drama takes us back 13 years to a fine spring day in River's End in 1927. The set shows Dr. Christian in his private office and Ellen McCarty, an attractive young widow, sitting across the desk from him. There is a skeptical look in the doctor's eyes as Ellen finishes speaking. And that, Dr. Christian, is why I've come to you for help. But, Ellen, you don't mean to tell me that you want to give up your child. Yes, I do. But she's just a baby. She needs her mother. This is no time for sentiment, Dr. Christian. I've thought it all out very carefully. I simply can't be tied down with a baby any longer. Is it money, Ellen? No, not exactly. Well, then why have you come here to ask me to find a home for your child? Because I'm going to be married again, Dr. Christian. Oh. I'm marrying Carter Gaylord. Carter Gaylord? I don't believe I... He's from Chicago, one of the Chicago Gaylords. I met him while I was visiting in the city after Frank died. And uh, doesn't your Mr. Gaylord approve of babies? He doesn't even know she exists. I wasn't going to spoil my chances by telling him I had a three-year-old child. And does he know you were married before? He knows nothing. Oh, but Ellen, you can't build your future happiness on deception. That's not deception, Dr. Christian. It's just... just a mission. Try to understand me, Doctor. I was crazy about Frank, and we eloped when I was 17. I had two wonderful years with him, and then the accident took him away from me. You can't know the sense of injustice, of frustration I felt. And then after a while, I got a grip on myself. And I vowed that never again, as long as I live, so help me, will I ever fasten my affections on another human being. No, don't, Ellen. Don't. Well, that's just water over the dam now. And I have a chance to make a good marriage with a man who is kindness itself and who can give me everything I need to forget. And I'm going to take my chance and not glamour nor anything you can say, Doctor, will stop me. No, well, Ellen, that's the way you feel. That is the way I feel. And you can know by the way I turn to you that I'm not completely devoid of a sense of responsibility. You brought glamour into the world and you did your best to save Frank. So now I'm turning to you once more. Sure in my heart I can depend on you to see that glamour is well placed. Oh, you can, Ellen. Only 
I want you to be sure that you're doing the right thing. I am sure, I tell you. Glamour is just a baby. If you can find some couple to take her in and raise her as their own, she'll never miss me. You ever stop to think that you might miss her? I told you I'm through with sentiment. I wonder. I have a chance to start my life all over again, and I'm going to wipe back the past. Mm. So you're really determined to go through with this? I am. And if you won't help me, I'll go to someone else. I see. I'll pay well, Dr. Christian. I'll have plenty of money now. I'll make it worthwhile for anyone who'll take glamour in. You must know some couple who need money, who give a child a good home. Mm. Eddie Clark has always wanted a baby. Who? Eddie Clark. She and John Clark are a middle-aged couple who own that old farm on the back of the road, mm -hmm. uh, beyond the old schoolhouse. Splendid, Dr. Christian. A farm would be an ideal place to bring up a child. They could use the money, too. They've been around here for years, ever since John's father died and left that old place to him. Quite oh, good. Please try to complete all the arrangements as soon as possible, won't you? I'd like to leave for Chicago by the end of the week. Well, I'll do what I can. You know how much I appreciate this, Dr. Christian. I wish I knew whether you and I are doing the right thing, Ellen. Christian, thank heavens you're here. It's early, Doctor. Mm, where is she? In the downstairs bedroom. Here. Glamour is with her. Uncle John. It's Dr. Christian, Glamour. Oh. Good evening, Glamour. Good evening, Doctor. Well, Abby, what's this I hear about you acting up again? It's, it's nothing, Dr. Christian. It is so, Dr. Christian. Well, I will soon find out. Glamour's barely 16, and I'm over 60. Yet she treats me like a baby, Doctor. <laughs> well, somebody has to look out for you. You won't listen to uh, you won't listen to what Uncle John says. <laughs> it's not difficult to see who's running this family. You feel better now, Abby? Yes, John. It was just for a few minutes there. I felt sort of faint. She'll be all right now. You've been working too hard, Abby. I told you that before. Uh -huh. She just won't stop for anyone, Doctor Christian. You must stop now. You must have a complete rest. But I can, Doctor Christian. She can too. Why, there isn't a thing in this house that I can't do. I know that, honey. You're a wonderful little housekeeper, but uh, from now on, I'm in charge. Well, I guess that settles that. What is it, Doctor? My heart again? No, it's nothing serious. It should take care of yourself. We'll see to that, won't we, Uncle John? I guess Abby forgets that we're not as young as we used to be. Sixty-three, that's not old. Why, my mother could work all day in her garden when she was seventy and come in and get supper for the hired hands afterwards. Now, you listen to me this time. I'll see that she does, Dr. Christian. Mm -hmm. I know I'm leaving you in good hands, Abby. There couldn't be better. Oh, what would we ever do without our baby? Well, I'll leave some medicine on the living room table, Glamour, just in case she should feel faint again. Two drops and half a glass of water three times a day. Okay, Dr. Christian. Thank you for coming, Doc. Now, uh, good night, Abby. Good, good night, night, Glamour. Good, good night, Dr. Christian. I'll walk out to the car with you, Doc. How um, bad is she this time? Abby? Well, she must have a complete rest, John. And nothing to upset her. No more housework, no more cooking, no more work in the garden. I can take care of the outside, and Glamour can take charge of the house. Say, do you realize what a beauty Glamour promises to be? And as good as she is beautiful. Mm, I'm proud about you and Abby, John. The way you raised that girl. Yeah, we couldn't love her anymore if she was really our own flesh and blood. <laughs> I can see that. And I know she feels the same way about you. Well, so long, John. I'll be around sometime tomorrow. Oh, uh, John. Yes? Does, uh, does Glamour ever ask about, about her mother? Not anymore, Doctor. She was curious for a while, but it seems now almost as though she's forgotten all about her. I see. Uh, there's not anything wrong, is there? No, no. I don't think Abby could stand it if anything happened now to take the child away from us. No, I don't think she could. Well, good night, John. Good night, Dr. Christian, and thanks for everything. Just came. 
Leave it on the desk where I want to finish these slides before I go home. But have you seen the headlines? No. What's the news? Well, listen to this. Ellen Gaylord fights for daughter. Heir to the Gaylord fortune asks custody of her daughter, Glamour, who has been residing with Mr. and Mrs. John Clark of this village. Hearing is set for Tuesday. Mm, what a pity. Oh, but aren't you surprised? No, Judy. I knew this was happening. Well, how did you know? Well, you see, I've been asked to appear at the hearing. You? But well, why you? I was responsible for the clerks taking Glamour in to live with them in the first place. You were? Mm, I was right here in this office that Ellen Gaylord came to me, Judy. She was uh, Ellen McCarthy then. Oh. And asked me to find a place for a child. Well, that was 13 years ago. Ooh, I didn't know you had anything to do with it. I just took it for granted they'd adopted her the, the regular no, way. No, I had plenty to do with it, Judy. I made all the arrangements. Ellen has been paying the clerks to keep him glamour all these years. She has? I knew they needed money and that Evie always wanted a child. After all, Ellen didn't want hers. Huh. Well, why do you suppose she wants a child now? Ellen is a young beauty. Oh. Well, what happened to her husband? Carter Gaylord died almost a year ago. I was afraid something like this might happen when I heard about it. I warned Ellen that she would regret giving up a child and that one day she would want her back again. But that's not fair to the Clarks. They, they raised the child. They've taken care of her all these years. All Ellen has done is send the money. Mm, a lot of things people can do with money, Judy. Fail or unfair. Anyway, it's up to Judge Latimer now. Are you? Well, a little. Oh, well, Judge Latimer is a wise, kindly man. Whatever he decides will be in your best interest, I'm sure. I won't leave Aunt Evie and Uncle John, whatever he says. Shh. There's the judge now. Stand up. Good morning, Doctor. Everybody here? Yes, Judge Latimer. Mrs. Gaylord? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. and Mrs. Clark? Yes, yes Judge. Yes, Your Honor. I have carefully considered this case and decided to trust the solution to the person it affects most. Glamour. Yes, Your Honor? You're 16 years of age, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, I think you're old enough now to make your own decision. You mean I, I can do whatever I want to? Yes, Glamour. You may choose between Ellen Gaylord, your mother, and Mr. and Mrs. Clark, your foster parents. And your decision will be final. <laughs> Glamour must decide in my favor for her own sake as well as mine. When she was a baby, the simple life here in the country was ideal for her, and I don't regret it. But well, you're not by any chance trying to justify abandoning your baby, are you, Ellen? I'm simply rationalizing, Doctor. My daughter is now a lovely girl on the threshold of life. Why shouldn't I want to make the horizon as wide and wonderful for her as I can? With her looks and my money, she can be the glamour girl of the age. Mm, you're the one who seeks glamour, Ellen. Perhaps your child would be content with happiness... Glamour is too young to know what she will ultimately want. Judge Latimer didn't think so. Remember, he left the decision to her. And you, Dr. Christian, are going to see that she decides in my favor. I am not. I'm not going to do one thing to influence her. Oh, yes, you are. You're fond of the clerks, and you love Glamour. I'll make it possible for you to do them both a good turn. Persuade Glamour to come back to me, and I'll settle a comfortable sum of money on the clerks for life. Well, that's life. very generous of you, Ellen. But even security for life may But if not... Glamour refuses to return to me, I withdraw every penny of support from her and the clerk's boat. Walking the floor, Dr. Christian, getting yourself in a state of nerves. Besides, you're driving me crazy. <laughs> you can't fool me, Judy. You are as worried as I am. I know. What a choice. What a tremendous decision for one little girl to make. Should I advise her, Judy? 
Well, I believe she'd be greatly influenced by your advice. She certainly adores you. Oh, but what, what could I advise her? The scales are so unevenly weighted. Opportunities, money, her mother's devotion, plus security for the class all on one side. And on the other side... No. Here's Judy. Love. The love and interdependence of the young for the old and the old for the young. That is the cornerstone of the American family life. Yes. That counts for a great deal, too. Oh, there's the outside door. Shall I go bring you? Yes, Judy. Good evening, Mrs. Clark. Good evening. Hi, Grandma. Hello. Won't you come in here, please? Well, oh, uh, come in, John. Come yes, in. Come in, Dr. Christian. And Evie. Are you sure you feel well enough to be out? I had to come, Dr. Christian. No, she didn't, Dr. Christian. My mind's all made up. Now, wait, Grandma, please. Here, Evie, sit down. Find your favorite chair, John, will you? Uh, hasn't Mrs. Gaylord come yet? Well, she won't be here in a minute. There's no need for us to wait, Dr. Christian. I, I tell you, I've made my choice long ago. Now, now, Grandma, darling, it's only fair for us to wait for her. I want you to be sure of what you're doing. I am sure. You must wait, Grandma. Your mother has something she wants to say to you. Nothing she can say will change my mind. Nothing. Mrs. Gaylord is here, Dr. Christian. Oh, uh, come in. Come in, Ellen. Good evening, Dr. Good evening. Christian. Good evening, Mrs. Gaylord. Good evening. And Mrs. Clark, I'm glad to see you're feeling better. Thank you. Glamour. Good evening, Mother. Uh, won't you sit down, Ellen? Uh, that won't be necessary, Dr. Christian. I can say what I came to say right now. Uh, before you say anything, Glamour, I believe your mother has something she would like to tell all of us. Well? Ellen? Yes? You're quite sure you want to hold Glamour to that bargain? You haven't changed your mind? No, I haven't changed my mind. And neither have I. I love Aunt Evie and Uncle John, and I'm going to stay with them. Glamour. They mean more, more than anything in the world to me. Glamour, listen to me, please. Yes, darling, you must listen to your mother. Well, what is it? It's just this, Glamour. I'm sorry for the past, and I want my little girl back again. I'm now in a position to give you every advantage. I'm deeply grateful for all Mr. and Mrs. Clark have done for you. And if you'll come back with your mother, darling, I'll settle a very generous sum of money on them. Enough so that they'll never have to worry again as long as they live. Oh, you will? That's very kind of you, ma'am. Oh, yes, indeed. I'm determined to have you back with me, Glamour, where you belong. So, if you refuse to come, if you still insist on staying with them, neither you nor they will ever get another cent from me. What? You mean you let my Aunt Evie starve? Well, that's up to you. Why, you wicked, cruel oh, person. don't you understand, darling? I want you back. You're my baby, and I love you. Love? Don't you dare say you love me. Glamour, you mustn't speak that way to your mother. She's no more my mother than, than that oh. desk is. Oh, Glamour, Glamour, you have no right to talk that way to me. You have no more real feeling for me than that piece of wood. You've always thought you could have anything you wanted just by going after it. Well, you can't have me. I'll never leave Aunt Evie or Uncle John now. I don't care how hard I have to work or oh. what I have to do. We don't need oh, your dear. money. I'll take care of them some way. Please, Glamour. This won't help matters. Oh, yes, it will. I want her to know just how I feel. Oh, Glamour, wait. Wait, let Mother explain. Glamour, darling, stop. John, please make her stop. No, no, Evie, don't oh. excite yourself. You didn't want me when I was a baby, when I needed you. Not because everybody else left you, what you want me back. Well, I'm glad you need me because now you can't have me. I'll never go back to you. Not even if I starve first. Oh, oh how can you be so unreasonable, so oh, glamorous? You mustn't. You mustn't say such things. I will. Oh. She's crying. Stop. 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 Judy. Judy. Oh, Aunt Heavy. Darling. John, give me a hand, brother, will you? Yes, 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 yes. Dr. Christian. Judy, get me my kid. Quick. Quick. It, 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 fix yes. the bearing for Mrs. Clark. Yes. She's had another heart attack. Oh, I'm the one to blame. My selfishness brought this all about. 
And now Mrs. Clark is so ill, and Lama hates me. Oh, no, Ellen. Hate is a strong word. Well, she does. She despises me, and all the time I was trying to do things for her. Ellen, would you really like to invite Lama over? Of course. Why else would I? Well, perhaps you're ready to take advice from your doctor question. What do you suggest? What I have to suggest can't be done quickly. Well, I don't care how long it takes. It long will only challenge. No, that I must change. I. You must learn patience. Consideration for the other fellow's point of view. You must earn the most love. But how, Doctor Christian? Not by trying to buy it as you did this evening. I know now that was a mistake. Oh, how she stood up to me, her eyes flashing and tongue lashing, a, a daughter to be proud of. Well, that's the way I feel. Why do not stay here and do the same for the summer? Get to know the child. See, persuasion won't bring better results than force. Perhaps you're right, Dr. Christian. But where can I stay? Well, what would you think of building a little summer place here? Well, nothing elaborate, but just an old-fashioned colonial cottage. Well, uh, why not? <laughs> why not, indeed. And I know just the perfect site for your cottage. It's on a hill back of River's End. And the grove of oaks that has been there ever since I can remember... And it looks away over the village to the winding stretches of the river. Oh, you make it sound too enticing. Who owns this land? Do you really think I could buy it? I think so, Ellen. But the grove of oaks on the hill is part of the John Clark farm. And I happen to know that they could use a bit of ready cash right now. <laughs> Curtain descends on another Dr. Christian drama starring Gene Herschel, who will be here at the mic in one minute to tell you about next week's play. Meanwhile, here is a simple, homely tip that will bring you a lot of comfort. Just as sure as the first balmy spring weather rolls around, your feet get too big for your shoes, at least mine do, and so here's what a famous orthopedic specialist recommended to me. Soak your feet in hot water at night, then rub them gently with reliable Vaseline jelly. The soothing, healing action of Vaseline jelly will relieve your discomfort in short order. Vaseline jelly is so helpful in so many ways. It's best always to keep a good supply on hand. Sores and calluses, burns and scalds, cuts and scratches, all respond to soothing Vaseline jelly. And it costs only 10 cents a jar. Next time you're at the drugstore, get acquainted too with some of the other helpful Vaseline products. Vaseline carbolated jelly, Vaseline borated jelly, Vaseline lip ice, and Vaseline camphor ice. The trademark Vaseline is your guarantee of the utmost purity and quality. Now, here comes Gene Herschel. Our studio audience is giving him a big hand, for there's no more popular actor in all Hollywood than the star of this Dr. Christian series. What's next week's story about, Dr. Christian? Next week, we've chosen a story called Riders of the Storm. It's about a young aviator friend of mine and a sick woman and a baby. And the worst storm we've had in Riverside for years. The storm that spells farewell to winter at last, I hope. So join us next week at your loudspeakers when we promise you one of the most exciting stories we've had on this series. Until then, I'll say good night. <laughs> The second in the series of RKO Pictures, based on this radio program, has just been released. It's called The Courageous Dr. Christian, and Gene Herschel is starred in the title role. Be sure to watch for it at your local theater. This is Arthur Gilmore adding a good night for the makers of Vaseline Preparation. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>